Good morning. Thank you, and welcome back to the EA Show. You know, I'm tired of saying my name, but you guys already know we are the hottest new talk radio entertainment show in the Valley. You know, guys, I want to thank you very much for tuning in and waking up with us early morning because we are the we are the show. We are the people's show. We give you what you want. Um, right now, we're bringing on a director. His name is Justin. Um, he was in a film that I was doing um, called Blood and Sand. Uh, Mountain Warrior Productions. This is a great movie that, you know, you guys need to take a look at, get information about, because, you know, up-and-coming productions are always there for your support. So, Justin, how are you doing this morning? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for giving us a call. You know, our fans that are stay tuned and listen definitely want to know, you know, what it takes to, you know, make a movie, to come up with scripts. And this was a great way for you to come on and tell us how to do that. Um, first question I want to ask you that, you know, I get you know I get a lot of requests from fans that are asked, what does it take to develop a script? When you came up with the script for Blood and Sand, how did you come up with that? Mm-hmm. Um, well, basically, you just have to have a story to tell. Um, so we were looking to make a film. Um, and so um, that story just kind of came to me. Um, it was the story is about a 19-year-old boy who um, tells his father that he's going to quit business school to pursue modeling full time. And so that story um, was inspired a lot by my own experiences being a model in Atlanta and a lot of the stories I had heard from other models. So it was just kind of a story that came to me. And so I mean, that's a perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a perfect way to to make a story is you're taking your own life experience and putting it down. I mean, that's a lot, the way a great you know director does this thing is is taking life experience. Um, mm-hmm. That's a that's a great way to go. I mean, a lot of fans don't understand that that when they when you develop a new film a new movie that's even independent short films. It, it takes a lot of heart and time and pressure. I mean, how long did it take you to actually, you know, work on that script? You know, some people say it takes, a, you know, a while. Some people say it's short. You know, I get a lot of another questions that I get is how long does it take, you know, a director, a screenwriter to come up with the script of a film? How long did it take you to come up with that? Because, like you said, it was part of your life, so it had to take some time to get that together. Um, I usually take... Um a day or two just to create the story in my mind uh, when I'm driving or in the shower or whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, when it comes to actually writing it down, it took probably um, a total of about two hours. I, I write very fast once once I get started because um, as an old former South Georgia moonshiner told me one time, <laughs> the hardest well, that's, that's the way, started. Best way to do it. Best way to yeah. do it. Um, you know, I'm going to explain to him, to the f- people that are listening, that I was a, I was a character on your film. Um, mm-hmm. I played Dave. He was a, he was an actor, you know, and I'm going to ask you questions about Dave in a second, mm-hmm. but let me just explain it to how I took it. Dave was a, was an unemployed, fall-down actor that was looking to reboost his career and make some money. Um, mm-hmm. And he did this film. And he was a creeper. He played a creeper to scare the, to scare the model, to not model. I mean, did I basically get my character correct? <laughs> you got it. Yeah, he was kind of a down on his luck actor, which uh, you, you see a lot of around. <laughs> in the, yeah, in definitely the agree. <laughs> so yeah, um, so he was just looking for a gig to put food on the table. Basically, he thought he had a sweet well, deal. You know, and that's the thing is, how did you come up with like? the names, were they just like random names that you just thought of, or was each character a symbol of somebody in your past that you've met that, you know, has taken your career at different levels, or was this just a, just a bunch of fictional characters? (laughs) Um, A lot of times, names will just, you know, they'll be chosen because they fit the character, uh, a lot of other times, they will actually be inspired on real people that you have known, but obviously you don't want to name names. But. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I mean, that's good. I mean, so it, with this story, like, I, you know, just want to just recap it. 
is it, it was more based on a, you know, your experiences with different, with different scenarios in the acting and modeling world. And mm -hmm. the characters, obviously different names are type of people that you ran into because in the acting industry, you know, you know better than me because I'm just an actor. You do meet some bad actors and you're, you meet some bad directors and things like that in the business. So this movie kind of fits that role. It, it's a really short, it's about, what, seven minutes and nine, seven minutes and 39 seconds long. That's, mm -hmm. It's a great short film. I mean, a lot of people should definitely look at it. It's, you know, again, we support developing new producers, directors, new actors. I mean, we had a, you had, a, what was the choice of picking the actors? Because you had a, you know, a, a model that was, you know, moving into the acting industry on the mm -hmm. set. So what was the, your choice of that? What, what did you like the best about, you know, going ahead and casting your, your, your actors for this role? What was the biggest thing that you were looking for when you sat down and you looked at all your casting, you know, aspects? What was your biggest thing that grabbed your attention to actors? What's, how, do you, how do you cast them? Because you have to get, like, yeah. 50 to 100 casting. How do you do that? How do you pick them? Because it's a hard yeah. job. I mean, as an actor myself, I would love to know how do you how do you pick them. Yeah, um, yeah. Casting is one of the most challenging parts of making a film. Because you have to find the right people, and then they have to show up and do a good job for you. Um, and so, yes, you're right. We did uh, look at a whole bunch of people through different casting calls and. And uh, through different agents, it looked at a lot of people, a lot of professional actors. Um, for the the star of the film, um, we end up casting a young guy by the name of Carson Heiner. He's the local talent, which is what I was looking for. And um, he was not a professional actor. In fact, this was his first film. And um, I was looking for someone who had the high fashion model look who could, uh, you know, legitimately sell that, and that's a hard thing to find because, um, you know, high fashion modeling is very specific. Not just any good-looking guy can do it, and so it's a very small percentage of the population. So I was looking for that specifically, and also someone who could act and, you know, uh, portray the character. And I, uh, I usually cast based on instinct, and so I decided to give... Carson a chance, and he did an amazing job, and he has a bright future as an actor. And as far as Dave, the photographer, I was look that was really the most challenging role in the whole film because he had to be creepy, he had to be scary, he had to be likable, all in the same seven and minutes and forty seconds. And so I looked, you know, high and low for the person who could do that until I found. This guy by the name of Imad, who's one of the country's hottest radio DJs. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, you know, and that that was a you know it was a and I'm gonna you know explain it to the audience. That was a difficult role because mm -hmm. um, my my body and the shape of everything. I've never done a creeper, um, <laughs> a creep type of style. But in the film, once you know we give out the what you know where people can actually look at it. You'll see two different personas. You'll see a persona that isn't that, then you'll see a persona that's that. And that's a really a difficult challenge to actually be able to maintain three, three different personalities into the show. And, and that's kind of what we did. I mean, you worked, you worked, that's why I said it was a, it was a great short script because you worked realistically five different personalities on this short mm -hmm. film. Because you had Dave that really was like a three different personalities. He mm -hmm. started at, you know, a creep, an actor, a funny guy, and, you mm -hmm. know, somebody that was that. And then you bring on another actor that really was a model, never have done it. So you had to juggle some pretty good, some pretty good skills to make sure it, everything worked in together. Then you bring on the father of the script that was, you know, the father of the model, of the actor, and that that had to be a that had to be a tough role because you know to find somebody that that clashed that worked with that should have been was pretty difficult. It had to be with 
with the market, with the acting industry, that must have been a pretty tough pull as well. Yes, yes, we were blessed to get a very professional uh, actor named Kevin Thompson. He did a great job as the father. And so, I mean, basically it was a group of very dedicated people working together for the love of the art. Um, it wasn't about money. I've seen that on a lot of productions, actors, you know, haggling about money, and it's just all about a job. And it wasn't that on, a, on our set because we're all having fun and, and telling a story, which is what filmmaking is supposed to be about. I'm a lot of filmmakers. What we'll do, Justin, we'll be right yep. back on the air. We're going to get back to that topic about the story. This is Imad on 1100 KFNX. Hey, I'm Don McDowell. Join me every Sunday morning, 7 and 9, for Shake, Rattle, and Troll, Arizona's only exclusive fishing show. A look at local, regional, national tournaments, recreational fishing, freshwater, saltwater, and beyond. Shake, Rattle, and Troll is brought to you by Bill of Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge, Sunday morning, 7 and 9, right here on KFNX 1100. An education lasts a lifetime. If your child's school isn't challenging them and preparing them for the future, apply today for an education savings account and give your child access to the school setting that best meets their needs. One in five Arizona students are eligible for a state-funded education savings savings account to pay for private school, homeschooling, or online classes. To find out if an education savings account is the right fit for your child, visit askamomaz.org. To qualify for next school year, apply before May 1st. Visit askamomaz.org. News, entertainment, celebrities, unpredictable. No one's ever told me they wanted to take their pants off during an interview. I just wanted to be honest. <laughs> the Gary Duff Show, Saturdays from 11 to 12 on KFNX 1100 AM. Hi, Rick and Dave here. The Elton Brothers on KFNX. Have you ever pulled in front of a listing, can't get a hold of anyone, and just wanted more info and photos? That's so annoying. Well, we have an app for you. Simply text Elton to 32323. It's completely free and downloads right to your mobile device. So any real estate sign across the valley. Text Elton to 32323 and get all the MLS info right to your phone. Immediately. The Elton Brothers, Realty One Group, putting real estate in the palm of your hand. Sun Devil fans, are you ready for the return of Todd Graham's fast-paced, high-octane offense? Throws for the end zone. Caught for a touchdown! The catch is made by D.J. Foster! What about the most ferocious attacking defense in the Pac-12? Pressured and brought down by Will Sutton. Sun Devil football ticket packages are on sale now and start at just $99. Visit SunDevilTickets.com or call 480-965-5812. Sun Devil football. Ready. Set. Conquer. Hey, welcome back. This is your host, Imad, on 1100 KFNX, the hottest new talk entertainment radio show. You know, we, we just want to give a quick recap. You know, we have a director on off of the production company, Mountain Warrior Productions. He is the director of Blood on Sand. His name is Justin. He screenwriter the play as well and came up with the play. Um, what I'm trying to do for the local audience and my online listeners as well is give you guys a different side of filmmaking. I've told you how to be an actor. I've told you how to get acting jobs. I've told you guys everything to go about acting, about radio hosting, everything like that. But one thing I can't do is tell you how to direct. And that's why we got Justin on the line today. He's given a lot of information out, and that's good. You'll find the in-depth of it. Thank you very much, Justin, for being with us this morning. Again, it's been a pleasure. And we finished off, you were telling us about how this is a story. Yes, yes. Um, you know, filmmaking is another medium to tell a story. In fact, it's the most powerful way to do so. And storytelling is the one of the oldest art forms um, around. <laughs> and so um, that's what that's essentially what it should be to me. Uh, a lot of directors these days, you know, seems to me like they try too hard just to be artistic, and then the films 
may look amazing, but then there's no story, and um, it just ends up being very boring. <laughs> there's no discernible plot in the film. <laughs> well, so, you know, I, I've you know, I, and I understand where you're coming from on that. I've worked on some films already in my short time in the film industry that mm-hmm. had a boring storyline. And you know, with our the film that we worked together on, it was a it was a great film because there was some. You know, you could see the seriousness, and you could see the comedy in it as well. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's a, and this is not me bashing, you know, blubbering myself up. There's a great script that you wrote for Dave to say. You know, there's a great line in the film that Dave said that actually was pretty comical. Um, and that, you know, keeps people laughing because they see the difference in the characters of Dave, for example. Like you said, it was a challenging role. And that's, that was great about how you story told that. And to keep it serious and keep it comical and serious at the same time was a good flip. I mean, so I got to say kudos. It was an honor of working with you on this. Hopefully you keep doing well, pushing out, making more films. We can work together in the future. I mean, it, it was definitely a blast working with you on this film. And, I mean, God, you got to keep going, man. You got to do another film so we can get working together again. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll never stop. So. Uh, that's the business. Well, how would my how would the audience find your website? How would they be able to take a look at your script? Do you have any? Can you give that? Can you give that release that out to anybody yet, or is that still under work? Yeah, no. I mean, the best way for them to uh, see the film and, and everybody should everyone who's seen it so far is given that it's. Uh, really great so that's always good to hear and um so the best thing they can do is just uh look it up on youtube it's blood on sand and find it that way and it's free to watch uh, a lot of directors say oh you're going to put it on itunes and sell it and i said no this one we did for the people so it will always be free and the one of the things that people keep bringing up is the intro um among other things that we got to a great uh, permission to use a really amazing song from an up-and-coming artist called Raleigh out of Atlanta, and, and people love that. And um, so there's a lot of great stuff in the film, something for everybody, and so everybody, everybody should check it out, Blood on Sand. They can just look it up on YouTube and enjoy it. What I would do, Justin, today, mm-hmm. I will definitely go ahead, for the listeners that are listening mm-hmm. and the online listeners, I will post it on my Twitter today. Um, so, guys, don't worry about remembering the name. Go on my Twitter at hashtag E-M-A-D, A-L-A-Y-O-U-B-I. There will be a link to directly toward the film. Please give us a comment, questions, concerns about the film. We want to know. This is our business. You know, this is what we want to know. And, Justin, thank you again for coming on this morning, explaining to the audience about the film. Absolutely. Glad Justin, again, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And again, we love to do business with you again <laughs> and make some more music, more some more magic in the film industry. We will. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Well, this is what we're about. You know, I've always told you guys, I love bringing different flavors to shows. I love bringing different characters onto the show. You know, we are the people's show. Like I've said before, we have done independent films. We have done free films. Like like Justin said as a director, this film is a new short script. It has humor. It has seriousness. It has everything. But it will always be free. And right now, I do free work as well when it comes to acting. I do take paid roles where it is. But if I see a good script that I think is good, it's worthwhile, I will do it. This script, Blood on Sand, was a funny, good script because it was a different character for me. You know, I had to put a fat belt on, and I had to do, you know, different roles as that. And I was had to go from being a creep to a funny guy to making jokes to being, you know, a normal actor. And that's what we do in the acting business is we have to change up who we are. So anybody that's listening... Thank you very much. Now you know what it takes to be a director, to be an actor, to be in the business. It's hard work. It's dedication. But if it's something that you truly want to do, we do it. 
But every week now on the EA show, we are going to bring you different reactions, different topics, different people's perspective in different fields. Um, next week, I got to tell you guys, you have to tune in because I will have a Playboy model on air in studio. Um, you're, it's going to be a Q&A with Playboy models. Who doesn't want to see that? Beautiful women. I will be posting pictures next week of the girls. We're going to be able to talk, take questions from the, from the listening audience, from online to all over the air. So that's a good thing to know is because who doesn't love, and sorry for the women that are listening, who doesn't love a beautiful Playboy model? <laughs> 